Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank members for their support of this motion, Mr. Speaker. But I just want to get a few minutes to clarify a few things raised by the member for Shrozel, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the government does not get involved in loan, distrib in loan disbursements at the, at the development bank. The bank has its own processes. They have their own know your customer. All what we do is we give the policy in this time, a guaranteed loan. So we don't get involved in who gives loans to whom, Mr. Speaker. We don't do that. That's not our style. It has never been our style, and it will not be our style, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, he spoke about CIP funded housing. I want to tell him that the last set of plans, which are the plumbing plans, Mr. Speaker, for the housing development in Rockall, are at the DCA, Development Control Authority, and as soon as the plans are approved, work will start on that project, as I said, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, and in terms of Kazaba, we had an engineer in last week. You see, Mr. Speaker, we want to do things right. We want to do things right. And we take time to do things correctly. And that's the difference. We take time. We're not in the business of minister playing engineer and minister knows everything, and minister pushes his hand in everything, and I'm the boss, and if you don't like it, do what you have to do. That's not our style. Our style is consensus. Our style is discussion. Our style is allowing professionals to do their work. And that's the difference between us and them. We allow professionals to do their work. So whether it's crime fighting, or whether it's medicine, or whether it's management of, of, of crime or management of health, we allow professionals to do their work. We do not interfere in the work of professionals. Our job is to determine the policy and make the funding available, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I just want to clarify to everyone that the $400,000 rebate the $40,000, no stamp duty, is on the first $400,000. So it supports, it helps everybody. So if your mortgage is a million dollars, I'm sure the minister, the member of Shozel, that's what his may be, he, he will pay duty only on $600,000, Mr. Speaker. That's the difference. He'll pay duty, he'll pay stamp duty only on $600,000. That's important. So the $400,000 stamp duty, if your house is less than $400,000, you pay nothing. If your house is a million dollars, you pay duty on 400, on, you do not pay duty on $600,000. You pay duty on $600,000. Understood? No, no, just, just making it clear, making it clear. For, $400,000 below no stamp duty. If your mortgage is more than $400,000, you only pay duty on the amount more than $400,000. So you, your million dollars is $600,000 you'll pay, you will pay, you will pay, you will pay duty on, okay? Um, so you, you, you get a benefit, just like tax, just like tax, Mr. Speaker, when we raise the tax on the first $25,000, any, anybody who gets more than that, you get, you get a rebate on the first $25,000. Mr. Speaker, something will happen this, this, you know, Mr. Speaker, I'm reading a book called The Ministry of Truth. And I want to suggest to all members to read it, Mr. Speaker. And if I could have afforded it, I'd buy a book, a copy for all members in this honorable house, except one. But it's because I would have bought the book for them, Mr. Speaker. And I would like the member for Shoesel to read it also. It's called The Ministry of Truth. You can Google it by Benin. Mr. Speaker, and it speaks to systematic misinformation and lies in politics.
misinformation and lies in politics. And it speaks to four principal means of misinformation. Number one, writing history, rewriting history. So you know something happened, you rewrite it. You write it in a way that didn't happen, you rewrite it. Secondly, you make the most audacious claims. So 1.2 billion in CIP, the most audacious claims. Claims you know are impossible, you make it. I make, I build them for the school. Two, three, Mr. Speaker. Three, you seek allies. You seek allies to push these lies. So you have allies. So you have people who write for you on Facebook, people who are on the radio station, your allies. They push these lies. That's the, the, the third one. And the fourth one, Mr. Speaker, is the complete absence of shame. You do not, anything you say, Mr. Speaker, you don't matter. You just buckle down. So even though you are proven, it's proven that you've not spoken the truth, you just say, you just repeat it, you say it again, and you buckle down because that's your truth, Mr. Speaker. I really want political practitioners, Mr. Speaker, to read this book. And reading this book, you'll see what passes for opposition in St. Lucia. It, it is a very revealing um, book for me, Mr. Speaker. I really want members to read it. As I said, I bought two copies. I shared it with one. And I, I've ordered another couple for some, one time ago when the Prime Minister, the member for View for South, he, he gave us, he bought a book for all 17 of us, Mr. Speaker. It was called a little red book that's called Cicero. What was How it? To How to win elections. Yes. Yeah. He gave us that book, Mr. Speaker. How to win a little red book, Mr. Speaker. So I want to get that book first for. <laughs> he gave you one too. <laughs> so I. <laughs> so I want to buy. I'll order sixteen copies. Sixteen. You take mine. Sure. Sixteen copies. No. Uh, 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 Mr. Speaker. Um. So, Mr. Speaker. I'll the reason I'm saying that, Mr. Speaker, is to talk about debt, Mr. Speaker, debt. Mr. Speaker, do you know that this government came to Parliament and passed a bill saying that we will publish the debt of this country on a quarterly basis? We'll publish it. It's part of the debt management bill that we passed in this honorable house. We passed it. The debt portfolio of this country is going to be published as per the law. Cabinet approved it and it published for everybody to see. For everybody to see what's the debt of this country. But you hear some outrageous claims, Mr. Speaker, that the government increased the public debt by $2 billion. And the public, Mr. Speaker, and what? Concerns, Mr. Speaker, and that is why I took refuge in this book and I understood what is happening. Is you must make the lie as outrageous as possible, Mr. Speaker. Let me tell you what the public debt of this country is because it's published. It's a published document. Nothing to hide. The public debt, Mr. Speaker, at June 2024 was 4.98 billion dollars made up of $3 billion of external debt and $1.9 billion of domestic debt. That is total debt, guaranteed and not guaranteed, non unguaranteed. That is the debt stock in this country. As of June 2023, one year, the debt of this country was $4.5 billion. So in that year, it increased by $400 million. I've asked for the figures for April 2021. I will give them to you in a while. That's the fact of this figure. So all the, all the claims, and, you know, and these things are easy to find. They are available. They're there for everyone to see. But you will hear all the claims on the radio and all the talk shows and, 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 they, and they buckle down on it. 
They repeat it and they say it again, Mr. Speaker. But it's exactly, so it's even less. you helping me. Because in there, you have the debt. But you help me. You help me in advertising. You see, when a man speaks the truth, and, and, and uh, you know, the truth first comes, you're helping me. Out of that, all of it not disbursed yet. Because we came and we, we went for the Taiwanese loan, and we haven't used the money yet. You know, so, yes, yes. Because you passed it here. Yes, I am. You know, this is, when he's alone, he has some freedom. <laughs> so we engage. When he's alone, he has, but you see, he, when, when he's not there, he, has, he hasn't got any freedom. But you know, so we engage. Yeah. Might be watching you on the line, eh? He does not hear no. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Mr. Speaker, that is the, the debt. And Mr. Speaker, he made a point about education, transportation for people going to school, Mr. Speaker. And I understand that that education, the, the subsidy for education is done, some analysis is done to see who needs where. It's not done just arbitrary. So I've had a chat with the minister. He'll make, he will look at it. And if we find that it's necessary and we can find the fiscal space, we'll do it. You understand? We're not in this business. <coughs> we're not in this business, Mr. Speaker, of, you know, Mr. Speaker, we're not in this business of just not doing things because the opposition said it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so um, we're going to look at it, and if it's necessary, we will we will we will see what we can do for it, Mr. Speaker. So I ask the member for Shuzel to look into the um, the debt when the debt figures are are published. Have a look at it, and we can have a sensible debate on debt, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. I thank members for the support, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward for that loan when it is cashed, cashed, when it goes into the coffers of the bank, Mr. Speaker, it will lead to transformative change in the housing sector of this country. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.